the story of Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam. Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam used to be in the employment of a rich man. Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam had such great love for Allah and contact with him that it created within him high moral character and exemplary habits. This was a clear sign of his nobility and nearness to Allah. The details of that is described in Surah Luqman in the Quran Sharif. The nobility of Luqman's character, alayhi salam, had a great effect on his master. So much so that the master considered him as a great friend and a beloved companion. Although he was the master, yet in fact, the master became like a slave to his employee. It is the miracle of love. Ye mohabbat ka karamat. It is the miracle of love that the king became a slave of his beloved. It then became the practice of the master that whenever he had something special to eat, he would first feed Hazrat Luqman salam of it. And after Luqman salam had filled himself, he would eat the leftovers. Hazrat Luqman salam would consider the love of the master and his habit. So he would eat moderately and send what was left over to the master. One day, during the melon season, the master received a melon from somewhere. At that time, Hazrat Luqman salam, was not present. The master sent one of his slaves to go and call him. When Hazrat Luqman salam, arrived, the master cut the melon into slices and slice by slice started giving thereof to Hazrat Luqman salam, to eat. As he ate the slices, the master inwardly became pleased at the effect of his love, at the effect his love was having upon Hazrat Luqman alayhi salatu was salam. Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam ate the slices of melon with great pleasure and all the time expressed thanks for the favor shown to him by the master. After having eaten the slices, when just one slice remained, the master said, let me eat the slice and see how sweet is this melon. Saying this, he put the slice into his mouth. Immediately, such bitterness spread from the tip of his tongue down to his throat that as a result of the bitterness of the melon, he fell down unconscious and remained unconscious for a whole hour. When he regained consciousness, he questioned Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam, O beloved one, how did you manage to so heartily eat those slices of melon? Just one slice of the melon had such an effect on me. How did you manage to eat so many slices? Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam replied, Khwaja Sahib, from your hands, I have received hundreds of gifts. The burden of thanks upon me is so great that my back has gone crooked. Hence, I felt ashamed that the hand that had granted me so much favors, if one day some distastefulness or bitterness should come, how can I turn away from it? from that hand. O Kwaja Sahib, the pleasure of knowing that it comes from your hands has changed the bitterness of the melon to sweetness. Great, great lesson in this story. Great lesson. Al-Ibra. My spiritual mentor, my peer, my sheikh, Maulana Shah Pulpuri, Rahimahullah, used to relate this story with great pleasure 
and used to repeat the last couplet. While relating the story, he used to advise thus, at every given moment, there are numerous bounties and favors of Allah upon men at every given moment. But if ever for a moment some such incident takes place which brings with it a problem and outwardly causes some difficulty, man loses patience and he fails to be grateful. On the other hand, there are those to whom true the blessings and the company of the saintly ones, Allah has granted a good understanding of dini affairs. So that when sorrows and difficulties touch them, they remain happy and pleased with their Lord. At such times, they draw strength from their good understanding of deen their fiqh of deen and realize that this world is like a hospital. This world is like a hospital and we are all like patients in this hospital of the world. There are times when the doctor gives the patient medicine like halwa ibadam, nice sweet medicine to eat and at other times he feeds them charaita Gulu and Neeb, which are very bitter. However, in both of these, there are beneficial results for the patient. Similarly, Allah is Al Hakim, the All Wise. And at the same time, is Hakim, the Ruler. He is Al Hakim and He is also Al Hakim. He is also Al Rahim the merciful one. Hence, whatever conditions are to befall us in accordance with Allah's qadr, taqdeer, predetermination, whether it brings out comfort or discomfort, all these are for our benefit. They are for our benefit and in our interest because Allah is Al-Hakim, Al-Hakim, as well as Al-Rahim. Let's go to the hadith. The hadith teaches us that for some bondsmen, a high rank has been determined. Allah wants them to reach that rank. But sometimes the bondsman has not acquired the good deeds to reach such a high rank. He's lacking in those deeds. Hence Allah causes him to become involved with some calamity which if he accepts and bears patiently he is able to reach that high position. Another hadith says a believer is touched by fever and while he suffers in this fever humma, his sins drop off from him drop off from him just like leaves fall off the trees in autumn. Another hadith says, a thorn pricks a believer and he receives a reward for it. Yet another hadith says, on the day of Qiyamah, when in return for having suffered patiently in the face of calamities and misfortunes, rewards will be handed out then every person who suffered calamities will wish that his skin had been cut to pieces with the scissors. Then what a grand reward he would have received on that day. Hence, a mu'min, a believer, should remain pleased in times of misfortunes. In other words, there should be no complaints or objections from his tongue. He should at all times seek Allah's pardon and forgiveness for sins and pray for safety from calamities. Ya yeah, Allah, we are weak. Nahnu 
and do not possess the patience to bear the difficulty of calamities. Allahumma inna du'afa. Please, in your infinite mercy, change the calamity to the safety, safety of your pardon. We have been prohibited from praying for calamities and have been commanded to pray for safety and pardon. The Prophet taught us when we pray, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to say, Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wal-afia. Pray for forgiveness and for safety. If we pray for calamities and misfortunes, it would be a sign from us of our bravery while praying for safety and pardon. Al-Afwa, wal afia are signs of our admission of weakness, which is liked by Allah. O people, discard your show of strength and power. Adopt an attitude of crying and weeping before Allah. As Allah's rahmat and mercy is directed towards crying in weakness. Cry to Allah in humility so that you become cheerful and happy. That you become cheerful and happy. Cry to Allah in humility, so that you become cheerful and happy. So that without the smile on your lips, so that without the smile on your lips, you remain so happy within your heart, with Allah, that thousands of smiles may be sacrificed for such cheerfulness of the heart. If at all times there is safety and comfort, then a person's temperament which inclines towards worship of Allah will move away from istikamat, steadfastness. Without calamities and misfortunes, a feeling of humility Tawazo, zof, kamzori, weakness is not created in a person. In a hadith Qudsi, Allah is reported to have said, I am with those of broken hearts. I am with those of broken hearts. Sabr, patience, causes the hearts to be broken as it is bitter. Sabr and patience is bitter. It causes the hearts to be broken. A person suffering from sorrow or in desperate need calls upon Allah in humility, crying and weeping. Can a person make in dua to Allah while in ease and comfort compare with him? Hargiz nahi. The former person is in such a calamity which causes him to become nearer to Allah and develops a strong bond with Allah. The contact with him increased even further. The enmity of the creation became the cause of mercy. A certain saintly man said, while suffering in sorrow, the way towards Allah is traversed speedily. speedily. One wali, said, while suffering in sorrow, the way towards Allah is traversed speedily. Why? This is due to the fact that through sorrows and misfortunes, a feeling of weakness, humility, and affliction is created in the heart. At such times, Allah's special communion is experienced. What does Allah say? Inna Allah ma'asabirin. Allah is with those who keep patience. This theme of Inna Allah ma'asabirin is so deep. This theme has been very, been very well expressed by Hazrat Asghar Kaundwi Rahmatullahi. What does Allah say? Inna Allah Ma'asabirin, Allah is with those who keep patience. So Hazrat Asghar Khandwi says, If you, O Allah, 
if you are sharing this grief of mine then why should I grieve over that grief? If you are sharing this grief of mine, then why should I grieve over that grief? In Allah ma sabirin. The conclusion to this discussion is that the life of this world consists but of a few days. Do din ki safar. Ay dunya ki musafir. Whether these days are of ease and comfort or whether the days are of calamities and misfortunes, they all shall shortly pass away. Hence, neither should one become overjoyed at the conditions of ease and comfort, nor complain and object in cases of difficulties and calamities at times of ease and comfort. Gratitude should be expressed. While in times of difficulties and calamities, there should be patience, acceptance, and surrender. If a person keeps the aims and objectives of life in front of him, then he has found the solution for all problems. The main aim of this life is to attain the pleasure of Allah, Riza Ilahika Hasil Karna. That pleasure is only attained by following His path and obeying the law as indicated by Him. To repent for all shortcomings and sins and to seek forgiveness for faults committed. Thus, if a person follows the Sunnah, then whether conditions of ease or conditions of calamity prevails, both these sets of conditions hold within them the means and the way towards Allah's pleasure. On the other hand, if one is not a follower of the sunnah, then the conditions of ease are of no benefit. Hazrat Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanwi Hakimul Ummah Nawar Allahu Marqadahu has said, Calamities and difficulties come over sinners as well as the righteous ones. The calamity can be a punishment for evil deeds or the calamity can be a means of gaining more closeness to Allah Ta'ala and an elevation of the rank of a person. Now, how would one make out the difference that it is a blessing or a punishment? That the person is righteous or sinful one? The person that follows the sunnah, even in the time of calamities, feels love for Allah, finds displeasure in Allah's decision. S sorry. He feels love for Allah, finds pleasure in Allah's decision, decisions, gains more closeness of Allah, and more humility is a righteous one. Maulana Tanvi says, this is how you know the sign. The person that follows the sunnah, even in the time of calamities, Masaib, he feels love for Allah, finds pleasure in the decree, the qadha of Allah. He gains more closeness of Allah and more humility is a righteous one. On the other hand, the calamities which create in the heart of a person feelings of darkness, solitude, and a feeling of being far from Allah, and through which a person does not feel inclined towards repentance and humility before him. In fact, he finds rejection and complaints of Allah. Then you may understand that this misfortune, this musibat, is a punishment and azab for evil deeds committed. In Surah Nur, the blessings of seeking forgiveness are enumerated. So this was the beautiful advice of Hakim al Ummah. Continuing. Maulana Tanvi continues. In Surah Nur, the blessings of seeking forgiveness are enumerated. Through it, Allah sends down 
rain grants beautiful gardens and grants blessings in one's children is take far let's go to maulana rumi maulana rumi alay rahma says when you experience sorrow in the heart turn towards istighfar astaghfirullah sorrow comes through allah's command sorrow comes through allah's command so neglect not good deeds but in fact increase therein when allah wishes to shower his mercy on us he creates in us the ability to incline towards weeping in humility maulana tanwi ali rahma says that he had a problem for some time understanding that allah grants some devotees certain high high ranks through their through their spiritual efforts and exercises mujahada however allah also grants to others the same favor without them making any strenuous spiritual effort so how is it actually logical that his mercy should tolerate that the true lover of his should subject himself to such strenuous ordeals maulana tanwi ali rahma struggled for quite some time to find a solution to this problem he says that one day the solution dawned upon him the answer was that if without mujahada effort all the stages and ranks were accessible to the devotees to the salik then there would be no appreciation for allah's bounties no appreciation no qadar for his ni'mats hence if there was no appreciation for these ni'mats and bounties no appreciation then there would be no continuation and progress of such ni'mats and gifts just as there is an increase of bounties through gratitude as described in the holy quran likewise there is a loss of bounties in cases where gratitude is missing maulana rumi ali rahma says why should the king of all intellect who is all merciful command such strenuous mujahada why then maulana rumi answers without mujahada no light of the truth is created in the heart which is perceived through faith and divine communion if that perception was possible through reason alone then there was no need for putting the nafs to such strenuous exercises maulana rumi says the amount of crying in humility and repentance a person does in times of sorrow and pressing need is much more than is possible in times of ease and comfort obviously he cries more in such these such cases in spite of that a person should not wish for nor look forward to calamities what he should seek is safety afiat from evil he should seek happiness and prosperity but if from allah's side some sorrow and calamity does befall one one should not then become distressed and lose patience instead one should understand that it is allah's intention to make and formulate you and through this formulation to increase and raise you in rank sorrow and calamities are also bounties from allah and in times of need the doers come right from the heart the place of prostration becomes wet with tears and one experiences the pleasure of dua which in itself is a great ni'mat in praying to allah the lovers have no other objective than to have the pleasure of whispering secretly in communion with him that's the objective the pleasure of whispering secretly in communion with him the secret talk is attained 
at the time of sorrow and weeping. And these sighs of crying and lamentation in his presence is well loved by him. Maulana Rumi says, Alayhi Rahma, I cry and weep before my beloved, for that appears well pleasing to him. And in both worlds, our crying and sorrowful sighs are loved by him. Blessed is that I that cries in the remembrance of the beloved. And blessed is that heart that is embroiled in his love. For as long as the babe does not cry, milk does not flow forth from mother's breast. As long as the babe does not cry, milk does not flow forth from the mother's breast. And as long as clouds don't shed raindrops, the garden does not become green. From the crying of the clouds, the garden becomes green and fertile. And as much as the candle cries, as much as the candle cries, so much it increases its light. There where the tears flow, mercy prevails. And where water flows, greenery and fertility prevail. Allah equates the tears of the sinner in grief to the blood flowing from a martyr. Crying and weeping is a great wealth and the mercy of Allah is a great blessing. The wealth of this world consists of gold and silver. The capital in Allah's sight is love and two crying eyes. Love and two crying eyes. One saintly person said, O oh, beloved, for the eyes to stay awake for anyone save you is a waste. Waste. And to cry over anyone's parting save yours is useless. Although it is bitter to bear calamities and misfortunes with patience, it is still a wonderful medicine. Bitter medicine, but still a wonderful medicine that brightens the devotee. The high ranks which were unattainable through years and years of spiritual exercises and rigors are speedily attained through patience. For this reason, it is wajib, essential, that every salik devotee should consider the bitterness of patience as being sweet in view of the great bounty attainable through it. It will only be a few days of difficulty and hardship. Thereafter, it will be smiles and laughing all the way. One gives only half a life in the effort. But in exchange for this half a life, the great giver of bounty grants numerous lives. He grants so many bounties through suffering patiently. Such bounties which has not entered your mind. He grants so many bounties through suffering patiently. Such bounties which has not even entered your mind. Such as the blessings of sabr and patience. Thousands of medicine has Allah created. But one such as patience, Adam and his children have not seen. Whoever has adopted patience has in fact acquired the high rank of the Siddiq. The Prophet wasallam has said that Allah does not even grant iman to that one in whose temperament there is no patience. Hazrat Ayyub ala nabina wa alayhi salam for seven years Sa'ad Sal remained patient and pleased with Allah's guests. That is the worms on his body. It is related that when Hazrat Ayyub salam, was saved from this calamity and became healed, someone asked him, Hazrat, when were you more pleased? Was it at the time when you were suffering in this misfortune or at the time when you were healed of the calamity? He replied, Alhamdulillah, 
thanks to Allah that he had granted me the bounty of good health, afiat, alhamdulillah. But you know what? During the time of this calamity, every morning and evening, the special voice which reached me from the world unseen, asking me, Oh, Ayyub, how are you? What pleasure and ecstasy was in that voice? It is such that numerous lives can be sacrificed for. That asking after my well-being was such that it made me forget all the misfortunes which I suffered. Every morning and evening, special voice from the unseen. Oh, Ayyub, how are you? How are you? It is such that numerous lives can be sacrificed for it. That asking after my well-being was such, it made me forget all the misfortunes which I suffered. The heart now longs for that voice which has now stopped, but yet it longs for that voice. When a person suffers sorrow and misfortune, he should most definitely not complain or utter any objections. This is most disrespectful, be adabi. There is no objection in taking treatment or complaining of pain in the body, no problem. The lover of Allah should not, however, object or have aversions of Allah who sends the calamity. Because sorrow and comfort, sorrow and comfort, both are handed out by Allah. Hence, complaints and objections are disrespectful and kufr. It is essential that a slave and a bondsman should at all times be satisfied with what the master decides. Allahumma inni asaluka ridha bil qadr. Allahumma inni asaluka ridha bil qadr. It is wajib that an abd, slave and bondsman should at all times be satisfied with what the master decides as the master is in full control and can do as he pleases. That's why the Prophet taught us to make dua that way. Allahumma inni asaluka ridha bil qadr. Now I close this subject by quoting a few lines of poetry. May Allah make us his true bondsmen and grant us the ability to act in accordance with his pleasure. Ameen. Maulana Haki Maktar says as he closes the subject, when in love, when in love, when in love, the complaint of the beloved is not appropriate when you're in love. For me, there is no injustice in any of his actions. Outwardly, though, it may be a calamity, but it is in fact a blessing in disguised form. That calamity in which there is goodness for us is not really a punishment. The love of the slaves of Allah cannot reach perfection until the blood of evil desires is not shed. May that which is pleasing to you, O Allah, also become pleasing to me. What would I do with that pleasure? What would I do with that pleasure which is not accompanied by your pleasure? How can I say that the pain which is in my heart of your love is not a gift of yours? He who is not blessed with this gift remains unaware of your glory. Do not rejoice over my tears of longing for him. When I am distanced from him, do not rejoice over my tears of longing for him when I am distanced from him. O oh, you, O oh, you, uninitiated in love, you have not as yet experienced the pain of deep-hearted love. Whosoever you witness, given his heart and soul to gold and silver, 
O actor, believe that he has not tasted the sweetness of the love of Allah. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastagfiruk wa natubu ilayk subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Social expectation drowns us all inside What you have should be what I want Cause what I have just ain't alright The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair How I live, oh I don't care This is who I am, this is me